Jillian and I are so glad to be here with you again this week. Mm -hmm. It's a little confusing when you go outside because it's, it's cold. spring, right? Yeah. But it's kind of like cloudy and cold. It doesn't feel very windy. spring like, but when you see the flowering trees and the daffodils, and I have tulips that are thinking of blooming. So mm -hmm. it is spring, and it's so fun to see all that Jesus brings alive in the spring that has looked dead in the winter, right? Yeah. So thanks for joining us. Let's get started and do some singing. <laughs> We're gonna teach you Psalms 100, the whole chapter, with a song, hand motions. I know we've done this at Sabbath school at church, but I don't think we've ever done it on here. So there's a time when normally we would be standing. We jump, so you'd normally and jump with spin. your feet. When we would turn around, we would spin. And is that I think it? that's it. Okay, let's start counting. But down. we're sitting, so we're we gonna are sitting, so do. we're making do. Yeah. Okay. Four, Four three, three, two, two one. one. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into His presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. Is he who made us, and we are His. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. <laughs> into His gates with thanksgiving. And his course with praise, give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Psalms 100. We are going to sing Thankful! I like to think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say that I love Him. I just want to lift my heart in prayer. I want to be thankful. I want to be Okay, we're going to sing the 
butterfly, butterfly song. song. So first we're going to be a butterfly, then a fuzzy wuzzy bear, and a kangaroo hopping. Okay. If I were a butterfly, I think you are that I could fly. And if I were a fuzzy wuzzy bear, I thank you, Lord, for my fuzzy wuzzy hair. And if I were a kangaroo, you know I'd hop right up to you. But I just thank you, Father, for making me be. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that I can fly. If I were, oh no, elephant first. Elephant, okay. and then bird in the sky, and then fish, fish in the sea. sea. Yep. Okay. If I were an elephant, I'd thank you, Lord, by raising my trunk. And if I were a bird in the sky, I'd thank you, Lord, that I could fly. And if I were a fish in the sea, I'd wiggle my tail and I'd giggle with glee. But I just thank you, Father, for making me. Mom didn't expect Juliana to refuse a cake for her 11th birthday. I want to bake you a chocolate cake, Mom said a few days before Juliana's birthday. No, thank you, Juliana said. Mom looked surprised. Why not? She said. I want to feed the homeless people rather than have a cake, Juliana said. Let's make soup for the homeless. Juliana had seen a crowd of homeless people sleeping at the bus stop when she and Mom had gone out, and she couldn't stop thinking about them. It's too difficult and too much work, Mom said. It would cost too much money for the ingredients. We also don't have a big pot to cook enough soup. But Juliana wasn't discouraged. I want to give soup to the homeless, she insisted. This is the work of God. Juliana had learned about God at a Seventh-day Adventist church in Salvador, Brazil. She first went to the church because she wanted to join its Pathfinder Club. She had seen a neighborhood friend wearing the Pathfinder uniform, so she wanted to be a Pathfinder too. A little while after she joined the club, she gave her heart to Jesus and was baptized. Mom was glad that Juliana loved God, but she wasn't interested in going to church. After Mom said she couldn't cook soup without a big pot, Juliana visited some of her Adventist neighbors and asked if they had a big pot that she could borrow. Two neighbors gave her big pots and she brought them home three days before her birthday but she still didn't have the ingredients for the soup. The matter seemed hopeless, so Juliana prayed. God, please give me wisdom and touch mom's heart to allow me to make soup for the homeless. The next day, Juliana gingerly asked mom again whether she could make soup for the homeless. Mom got angry. Go to the store and ask for them to donate the food for the soup. She replied, she secretly hoped that Juliana would be too shy to go to the store. But Juliana happily skipped to the neighborhood store, praying, Thank you, God, for answering my prayer. At the store, she told the manager about her desire to make soup for the homeless and asked if he would donate the ingredients. He told her to return the next day. Juliana went to several other stores with the same request, but all the managers also told her to return the next day. She visited her Adventist neighbors again, and they promised to bring over some vegetables. The day before Juliana's birthday, she stopped at the first grocery store after school. The manager gave her a huge bag of vegetables. The other stores and her Adventist neighbors also gave her food as they said they would. Mom was shocked when she saw bags of onions, chili peppers, potatoes, carrots, pumpkins, corn, spices, and other ingredients for soup. What is all this? She asked. These are the ingredients for the soup that you're going to make, Juliana beamed and showed Mom the two big pots that she had borrowed. Mom was amazed at Juliana's determination to help the homeless. With the help of several Adventist women, they made the soup. On her birthday, Juliana put on her Pathfinder uniform, and with her friends and Mom, they loaded the two big pots of soup into a car. When they arrived at a bus stop where some homeless people sat, 
A friend announced, today is Juliana's birthday, and she has made soup for you. The homeless people were delighted. Everyone formed a circle around Juliana and clapped and sang happy birthday to her. Mom felt ashamed that she hadn't wanted to help the homeless. She realized that Juliana was filled with the love of God, and she wanted to be filled with God's love too. Two months after Juliana's birthday, Mom was baptized. Today, Juliana, Mom, and several other church members go out twice a month to feed the homeless and share God's blessings. and girls and happy sabbath i am so excited to be here with you for another nature nugget and this week's nature nugget animal is so adorable and i can't wait to share some fun facts with you so let's jump in and start with our clues for this week's nature nugget animal clue number one their ears can rotate 180 degrees and clue number two they sleep almost 70% of the day. Hmm, what animal could this be? That's right. This week's Nature Nugget Animal is all about cats. Domestic or house cats are all small mammals that l have lived among people for a very long time. They are warm-blooded animals, which means they maintain a constant body temperature, regardless of how warm or cold their environment may be. They belong to the same family as the big cats, which include the lion, tiger, leopard, and cheetah. Unlike the big cats, house cats do not roar. Instead, they purr or growl. Cats differ in appearance. They can be big or small. They are covered with fur, and they, have a sh they can have short or long fur. Their fur comes in different colors, including orange, brown, white, and black. Some cats have coats with stripes or spots. The, hat, the cat's head includes the eyes, ears, mouth, nose, and whiskers. The eyes are used for seeing objects. Cats are able to see well even in dim light. Their eyes are open wide when they are interested and alert. But if they are scared or angry, their eyes may appear like a slit. The outer ears are funnel shaped and they draw sound into the inner ear so that the cats can judge where the sound is coming from. The ears are sensitive enough that they can hear even the softest sounds. The nose, which has no fur covering, is a sensitive organ used to smell and recognize objects. Below the nose is the mouth, and inside the mouth there are pointed teeth that grind food and a rough tongue often used for grooming. Cats use their whiskers to fill objects around them in the dark. They also use them for sensing temperature. Cats can be found all around the world, except in Antarctica. Domestic cats live in homes or urban areas, and they prefer to live indoors. Cats can live for a long time. On average, they live for about 12 to 16 years. As they get older, they may need more rest and extra care. Cats are carnivores, so they eat meat. They have strong jaws that can grab and hold onto their prey. They also have very dagger-like teeth that can shear and slice through. House cats do not usually need to hunt for food. They are often fed with cat food that can be bought at a pet store. Cats purr. They often purr when they are content and happy. Let's take a second and listen to a cat purring. Oh, I think that is so sweet. However, they may also purr when they feel anxious or sick. Did you know cats run? When they run, they push off with both their back legs at the same time but place the front paws down separately. And cats are also amazing at jumping and leaping. They leap by flexing their leg muscles and balancing with their tails. 
Like most mammals, young cats are born live. They do not hatch from eggs. A young cats are called kittens, and kittens are born blind and helpless. Their mother feeds them milk and keeps them clean. They start to open their eyes when they are 5 to 10 days old. After 4 to 6 weeks, the kittens become less dependent on their mother. They start to eat solid food, and they can leave their mother and they are ready to be placed in a new home. They grow up so quickly, and after one year, they are considered adults. So there is more than 40 different kinds of and breeds of cats. They come in different shapes and sizes. Some have long coats, while others have short fur. There's also so many different coat shades and colors. So let's get ready, and I'm going to tell you three fun facts about cats. Fun fact number one, cats have different eye colors, and they can have blue, orange, lavender, or yellow eyes. Some cats even are odd-eyed, which means each eye has a different color. Fun fact number two, a cat show is an event wherein the cat owners compete to win the titles. The first formal cat show was held at Crystal Palace in London on July 13, 1871. All right, fun fact number three, cats love to sleep. They spend two-thirds of their day, which is about 16 to 18 hours a day, sleeping. So a nine-year-old cat has been awake for only three years of its life. All right, boys and girls, that wraps up another nature nugget and remember like the beautiful book steps to christ talks about we can learn more about jesus in nature the green fields the trees the passing clouds all of it speaks to our heart and invites us to become acquainted with jesus who made them all including the very curious cat all right boys and girls here are your clues for next week's nature nugget clue number one their feathers are very waterproof. And clue number two, the male of this animal is called a drake. All right, boys and girls, best of luck. And I hope you have a wonderful week. And I will see you again next week for another Nature Nugget. Bye. Hello, boys and girls. This is Anfernita, and I have a wonderful story for you called Abram to the Rescue. Today's memory verse is from Genesis chapter 14, verse 24. It says, I will accept nothing belonging to you. The message for today's story is we serve others out of love. Who helps you when you are in trouble or afraid? Abram helped Lot when some enemies captured him. This is how it happened. Abram sat near the door to his tent, enjoying the fresh breeze. Suddenly he stood up and put his hand above his eyes to shade the sun. He could see a man running towards him. Abram walked out to meet him. Oh, Abram, the man gasped. There's been a great battle. The king of Sodom and four other kings went to war against their enemies. The man tried to catch his breath. Abram looked worried. His nephew Lot lived in Sodom. What happened? Abram asked. The king of Sodom and the four other kings lost the battle. The enemy kings captured Sodom and another city. They carried away all the food and the gold and the animals and the people. They took your nephew Lot and his family too. You rest here, Abram said. Then he went to pray. He asked God to guide him. Soon after, Abram gathered his soldiers and told them his plan. Three neighbors and their men joined him. They would find the enemy kings and follow them, but they would wait to attack until the enemy had made camp for the night. That night they surprised the enemy kings. The startled enemy kings ran away, leaving behind the gold, the food, the animals, and the people. Oh, uncle, exclaimed Lot when he saw Abram. I'm so glad to see you. Let's go home, Abram said. So the people gathered the gold and the food and the animals and followed Abram. Abram had won the battle, and that gave him the right to keep those people and all their things if he wanted to. 
As they neared Lot's home, two men came out to meet them. Melchizedek, the king of a city named Salem, and a priest of God, brought food to Abram and his men. He blessed Abram and said, God the Most High delivered your enemies into your hand. Abram knew that God had won the victory for him. He was so grateful that he gave God's tithe. That's one out of every ten animals and pieces of gold to Melchizedek, God's priest. The other man, the king of Sodom, said to Abram, Give me back the people and keep everything else for yourself. He knew that they should all belong to Abram because Abram won the battle. But Abram didn't want anything. I didn't go to battle to get rich, he said. I will accept nothing. Abram asked just for the food his men had already eaten and for shares for the three neighbors who helped him. Abram was happy to serve others out of love, and we can serve others out of love, too. This podcast was brought to you by gracelink.net and Studio El Piso. For more children's resources, please visit gracelink.net. Thanks for joining us. We're so glad that you came and that you could sing with us and we could learn Bible stories. And hmm, you'll have to tell somebody about that animal nature that you nugget? learned about. Yes, nature nugget. Um, we hope you have a wonderful Sabbath. Maybe you can bundle up and get outside a little bit and enjoy seeing some of the beautiful spring flowers and trees that mm-hmm. are coming. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for Sabbath. Thank you so much for giving us voices to sing. Thank you for the beauty of spring, the birds that are singing and the pretty flowers and God, the flowering trees. Thank you for um, our world that you have created. You are such a good God and we are so grateful for you. We love you so much, Jesus. Amen. Bye. Have a good week.